Kuti, and I'm just so glad today to be sharing with you God's Word. Uh, in this season of at, at Penwith Baptist, where we are going to be looking at the stories of God's grace within the book of Mark. And uh, I just want to start by reading the story that I'll probably be focusing on today, which is a story of blind Bartimaeus. Uh, and really looking into that, but focusing and narrowing down to God's mercy, God's mercy in our lives. But maybe before I do that, let me just pray. Father, I just want to thank you so much because you're a merciful God. And I just pray that as we hear you and as we listen to your word, that you would really speak to us, speak to our inner man and bring revelation to us about your mercy. I thank you for all these stories that we can read of what Jesus did and the encounters that people had with his mercy. And I pray that as we dig deeper into your mercy, that God, you would really open our eyes to actually be able to see you as a merciful God. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I just want to start by reading the story of Blight but Myers. And if you go into the, in the text that we'll be focusing on today, is Mark 10, 46 to 42. And I'll just... Focus on that, but we will touch up. We'll touch on a few other uh, 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 stories just very briefly. And it reads, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus. Son of David, have mercy, have mercy on me. Then many warned him. Can you imagine? Many people actually warned him, be quiet. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer. Rise, he's calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? It's interesting, the blind man, you know, but Myers is coming, but Jesus is still asking, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabon, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. Immediately he received his sight and follow Jesus on the road. The story of God's mercy. You know, our first encounter with God's mercy is at the point of our salvation. But God doesn't stop at that. You know, the greatest truth of all time is that Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, he is God's mercy to us. The son of God is God's mercy to you and me because God looked at our misery. He looked at how sin afflicts us. You know, being a merciful father, he responded to our most pitiful and devastating state of sin by giving us his best. God's mercy responded by giving us his best, his son. So when we find blind but Myers asking God for mercy, he knows what you know, he he there's something about God's mercy, his compassion, his kindness towards us. And this is what actually he tapped into. He tapped into the kindness and the and the and the and the mercies of God and called on to Jesus, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. We are God's children today because of his mercy, nothing else but his mercy. However, there's a danger if we only live to experience the mercy of God only at this level. We can't just say God is merciful to me as a sinner or I, I found God's mercy at the point of salvation. That is great, but we can go beyond that and continue to experience his mercy day in, day out. Because we are often familiar with the message of Luke writing about the tax collector who said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. You know, vis-a-vis the -vis Pharisee who thought he had it all together. But God's mercy is not restricted 
within the boundaries of salvation, to, so to speak. That is not where his mercy starts and ends. It's not just within the boundaries of salvation. But our cry for mercy is one that our Heavenly Father loves to respond to. Respond to. He, merciful Father, it is who he is. He is full of mercy. He says in, in the book of Hebrews 4, 16, draw, you know, he says, draw near to me with confidence. In your time of need, I want to give you mercy. You know, those seasons in our lives when we are so needy, very, very needy. And he says, draw to me in those seasons when you really are in need. And don't, don't just draw near to me, but draw near to me with confidence because I want to show mercy to you. I want to be merciful to you. Actually, the verse says in Hebrew 4, 16, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God wants to help us. He wants us to experience his grace. He wants us to experience his mercy in times of need. Do you realize that there are so many people that we cannot approach with confidence to seeking for mercy? But God says, no, if you need mercy, approach me for it and do it with confidence. One of the things I believe that God wants us to know today is that God is a merciful God. We don't always have to run. We don't always have to will things because God is full of compassion and is full of kindness. Psalms 103, 13 to 14 says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord, he is compassionate. That's what Blight but Myers was tapping into. The compassion, you know, the compassionate heart of God. You know, he says, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are just but dust. Unfortunately, we live in a world today where the word father and the word mercy and the word compassion is not often experienced. So it is very easy for us to think and never to really come to terms or to think of God as a merciful God. But he's so full of mercy day in day out we can tap into his mercy he wants us to see him as a merciful god you know paul so much awestruck with the sovereign ways of god among the jews and the gentiles as far as the revelation of good news of christ is concerned he writes to the romans and says so it is not of him who wills he says so then it is not of him who wills nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. That's how, that was Paul's conclusion. He was trying to think, God, you're sovereign. I can see the children of Israel. I can see the Gentiles. I can see how you're weaving this story together. And then he says, it's not just about how much we work hard. It's just because God has been both merciful to the Israelites and to the Gentiles. Other versions say, it doesn't depend on our desire or effort it is not a question of human will or effort it is about god's mercy our lives are not just dependent on how educated we are how connected we are how networked we are how developed we are how strategic we can be or even how wise we can be or even how hard working we can be it's by his mercies that we keep going on. His mercies are new every morning. We read that in Lamentations 3, 22 to 23. It says that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are new every morning. His mercies, they never come to an end. Great is your faithfulness. He is a merciful God. And this day, I believe God wants to remind us that he is a merciful God. Just as he was merciful to blight but mice, he wants to be merciful to you and he wants to be merciful to me. Be merciful even as your father is merciful. That's what Luke 6, 36 says, that we need to be as full of mercy just as our father is so full of mercy. Be merciful as your father is merciful. It's, it's, it's a very... Mercy is one of those 
sometimes not so much talked about character of God. Because I think we live in a world where we think we can make it. We can do things. Uh, we don't think sometimes we are needy. But we are needy people. It's one thing to say, God, I love you. It's another thing to say, God, I need you. I need you. I, I desperately need you in my life. And when we come to those moments in our lives, what we need to do is to tap into his mercy. So it's very good that as we think about this, uh, uh, the story of blood, but Myers, the stories of God's grace in our life, that God's grace to us as well is mercy. And the reason that God wants us to know his nature, that he's a merciful God, is so that we can know what to ask for, we can know what to expect of him and who to become. We can know that we can ask of mercy. We can know that we are going to receive mercy from him. And we also know that actually we can be merciful. We need to know that we can be people full of mercy. Mercy, if you were to de define mercy really, is just kindness or goodwill towards the miserable, afflicted. But not just that goodwill, but the desire to relieve them of that affliction. And so when Blight Matt Myers is saying, Jesus Son of David, have mercy on me. Please relieve me from this pain. Relieve me from my blindness. Relieve me from this desperate situation that I have been in for years on end. And he's tapping onto that, God's mercy, that Jesus would hear him. And actually the word says that Jesus stood. That cry for mercy made Jesus just stop. While many people were saying, you know, just stop this. Stop what you're doing. So the story of Blight Matt Myers, he must have been very tired of his begging life. And though he could actually not see, he made use of his mouth and he called God for mercy. He asked Jesus for mercy. What faith did the Blight Matt Myers have? He believed that Jesus would have mercy on him. He believed that his condition would warrant his cry for mercy would warrant both the pity and the kindness of God. We don't always have to play strong. We don't have. Sometimes it's okay to say, Lord, have pity on me. Look at my life. Look at my situations. Look at my circumstances. Look at where we are as a family. Look at where we are as a community. Look at where we are as a nation. And we can actually call to God and say, Father, Jesus, have mercy on us. Have mercy on the condition <clears throat> of my life, the condition of my family. His compassion will lead us to us, will lead him to ask us, what do you want? And at that point, then we need to be very clear. What is it that we want? Because he still asked, but Myers, what do you want? Yes, you've called me for mercy, but what do you actually really want? So do we have situations in our lives that need that attention of God's mercy? I have had so many of those, so many of those. Many times in my life, I've actually cried out to God over and over again for his mercy. Because Jesus says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And I know we might argue when Ma in Matthew 9, 12, 13, when Jesus says that, go learn what this means, that I desire mercy, not sacrifice. He didn't come to call the righteous, but sin us to repentance. And I know we might argue that this is within the context of sin. And it's true, yes. But how many times do we walk around with a sense of self-righteousness? Oh, we say, I have been praying and fasting about this for a while. And I'm trusting that God will do something about it. Oh, I'm on top of this issue. You know, I got this. I'm working on it. But sometimes when we prayed, when we fasted, when we have tried, when we have hoped, and nothing seems to come our way, sometimes I think it's good, maybe many times, to tap into the mercies of God. He wants to be merciful to us. He wants us to actually come before him and say, we are a needy people. I am a needy person, Lord. I need you just as much as I needed your salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. I can actually come back to God and say, yes, even this situation in my life right now, I need your mercy 
Because unless you come and have mercy on me, I'm going to remain in this state for a long time. You see, blind but Myers knows affliction. He knows it's hard to navigate life without a set of eyes. How hard it is to navigate life without a set of eyes. He's calling on the Jesus he's never seen. He's blind. He's calling on Jesus he's never seen. But some, how many of us are stumbling over darkness, dark areas of our lives, really trying situations, intimidating issues, and we are still saying, I've got this. No, we don't. Ask God for mercy. We've not got it all together. We need to ask God for his mercy. In other words, Lord, we are nothing much without you, Lord. When Jesus says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, he's saying, I want to be merciful to you more than you want to delight me with your sacrifices. You know, we love to delight the Lord. And it's good because he says, you know, if we delight in him, he'll even give us the desires of our heart. It's good to delight ourselves in the Lord. And it's good to do all the things that we do for him. But Jesus is saying, more than you giving me sacrifices, I created you and I actually want to be merciful to you. You need my mercy more than I actually need your sacrifices. I know you don't need to earn it. I can help you. Today, probably God is saying, you don't need to earn it in this situation. I want to help you. I can help you. Just cry out and say, Lord, help me. I need your mercy. We don't need to earn it through prayer. We don't need to earn it through fasting. You see, if everything was just about earning and our work and our strength and our trying and our striving, then some of us would become very proud. But sometimes God brings situations in our lives to remind us that it's not just how much effort we put in place. It's not how much we run as the Hebrew, the writer of Paul reminds us uh, in, 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 in Romans. It's not just how much we run or will or desire or the effort we put in place. He said it depends on God's mercy. And when we look at other story, and I'll just brush through this, if you go into Mark chapter 7 and verse 24 to 30, we find another account of God's mercy. But I will read this within the context of Matthew, because that's where uh, 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 the, the, the redition in this, in, in this part talks of God's mercy. It says in, Mark, in Matthew's account, which is, this, uh, which is in Mark 7, 24, 30, but in Matthew 15, 21 to 22, then Jesus left and went to the north, to, went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon and a gentile woman who lived there came to him pleading he said she said have mercy on me O Lord son of David why my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely please pity me pity my condition have pity on my daughter have pity on us as a family we need your mercy please help us we have, we, this is tormenting my daughter. And you can imagine for a mother, when your daughter is being tormented, you're equally being tormented. But she says, have mercy. And you know the response that Jesus gives her. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her. For it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. You know, and then and the Lord, then she replied, even dogs under the table eat the children's crabs. And then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. Why? Because she, she, she tapped into the masses of God. The masses of God is something that we really need to learn as children of God, that our Father is really, really merciful. And if you read and record it, there's so, there's so much scripture around God's mercy. Ephesians 2, 4, 5 says, but God being rich in mercy, rich. He's not just merciful. He's rich in mercy because of the great love which he loved us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. As I said from the beginning, it's his mercy that reached, us, reached out to us in our state of sin. That's how powerful mercy is. That when you and I were sinners, mercy right through to us. He saw our condition and he sent his son Christ. Mercy conquered the greatest enemy of our lives, which is sin. How much more shall we obtain mercy to help us in times of our need? Think about Jonah, for example. He was running away from God's mercy. When we read about the story of Jonah, the fact that God is merciful is what really bothered him. 
because he knew God's mercy triumphs over judgment. We can read that in James 2.13, that God's mercy, mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy, God's mercy is so, sometimes can look, we shouldn't joke around with mercy because <clears throat> you can watch God's mercy prevail over people you didn't like and you can actually take offense. We can really easily take offense when God is merciful to somebody because he picks them up. You know, it's just his compassion, it is kindness. And we can actually take offense when people uh, seek God's mercy. It can actually feel unfair. David said, let me fall into the hand of God, not men. You know, when we read in 2 Samuel 24, 14, after he had gone ahead and was trying to take a census of his fighting men, and the Lord was not pleased and he was given options by, 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 by God. And he comes back and says, okay, I get the three options. But David's heart was, I'm in great distress. You know, David said, I am in great distress. Please let us fall into the house, in the hand of God. Why? For his mercies are great. I would rather fall into the hands of God. His mercies are great. But don't let me fall into the hand of man. If you read the story in that chapter, you'll see how God was so merciful. David knew there's something about God that he looks to us and he has kindness. He looks to us, he has compassion. He looks to us, he can see we are struggling. He looks to us, he can see we are needy. He looks to us and remembers, oh, they are just but dust. He looks to our, you know, our humanness and our struggles and he wants to be merciful to you and to me. So how does your money change? Knowing that God is merciful now, how does that change our lives? How does our money change? First, we understand that God is merciful. We must ask God, give me that revelation. Help me to be sure without any doubt that God, you are a merciful God. I want to see you merciful. Our Father is merciful. We must see him. It doesn't matter the experiences that we've had sometimes with the, you know, with, with, with people that are in authority in our lives, whether they are fathers and mothers and uncles and aunties. It doesn't matter what we've gone through. Ask God, please help me to see you as a God that is full of mercy, as a God that is compassionate, as a God that wants to be kind to me, that I, as a God who actually pities me when I'm in my lowest form. You don't rejoice. You actually pity and you, and you, and you, can, and you want to be kind to me. He longs, he has a deep desire to be kind. He wants to relieve us from our misery and affliction. So number one, we must have this clear revelation of God's mercy, you know. But number two, we need to learn to ask and to receive mercy. Mercy is not earned. Mercy is received. You just receive mercy. That's why Jesus is mercy to us. We didn't earn him. It's just mercy is just received. Humble people receive mercy. Proud people oppose mercy because it makes them look weak. You know, when someone is merciful to you, you can actually go like, oh, you think I can't do that by myself? Especially sometimes when men are merciful to us. It's very easy for us to be very proud and think, oh, I could do that. You didn't have to do that. In fact, sometimes people do things to us and they say, oh, you didn't have to do that. No, they wanted to do that. It's okay to allow people to be merciful to us. It's okay to learn to receive mercy from people. It's okay. People want to be kind. You know, if, if, if God's, God's drawing kindness to people and he, he has put kindness in people and people want to be kind to you, receive mercy. We need to let God know that we need his mercy and we can ask for mercy. But let us also learn to accept the ministry of mercy through men. Let's not be proud. That's number two. Let's learn to ask for and receive mercy. Number three and the final thing, let's be missional with mercy. We need to ask God to help us to be a people that are moved with compassion so that we have the desire to relieve people from their afflictions as well if we are in a position to do so. Of course, we need to be wise. It's not every single person that you find around, you know, that you have to relieve the afflictions from. But if you design in your heart, prayerfully so, 
let's learn to be merciful to people there are people who are they have they are so much afflicted in our society we see them every day but we sometimes we can just turn, turn a blind eye no we need to be merciful remember Luke reminds us that we need to be merciful as our father in heaven is merciful the, the, this character of God needs to be uh, seen in us as his children as we are merciful to those around us and we are merciful to our community to our to our communities I was recently talking to a, a lady friend of mine and she she met this lady at the, at the, at the bus stop and prayed for her and she had a crooked leg and when she prayed for her her leg just twisted back and became straight like it was sort of like a miracle right at the bus stop and as I was listening to her and uh, I asked her what drove you to go and pray for someone at the bus stop he said compassion I looked at her leg and I couldn't imagine what she goes through and I was moved by compassion I went there and I said daddy please help her he didn't she didn't even say said, daddy please heal her and the, the crooked leg just fixed itself and the lady started crying the story is a long story in terms of how they ended up moving and becoming part of their church community but you know we need to be a people that are moved with compassion when we see people everywhere people are afflicted on so many levels and sometimes it's very easy to forget you know we can intercede mercifully for others our nation our community you know asking god to have mercy on our young people you know we need to lower people to jesus i like the story of the four men that went through the roof and they lowered a man to jesus we need to lower men to jesus can you imagine for a moment instead of the disciples telling the blind man shut up or the people around telling the blind man shut up how sad like really sad you can see someone is blind and they're seeking help from Jesus and you're telling them, shut up. Even the disciples, like, it's just how far we can be so removed from people's affliction. I would imagine that, you know, the disciples are the ones who would have been the ones telling him, you know, please have mercy on this man. Jesus, stop, stop. There's a man here that needs your attention. No. They want sometimes we can be so removed and we need to be remain so missional with mercy so that's my encouragement today from god's word i believe that we need to really really tap into god's mercy we need to uh ask god to help us to to, to be merciful people see him as merciful and also be missional with mercy god's mercy is amazing i just want to leave you with this verse i really like it in, in romans that it is not of him who runs it not of, it's not of him who wills. It's not about our desire. It's not about our effort. It's really about God's mercy. Let's learn to tap into his mercy. He's merciful and he wants to be merciful to you and me. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you that we are products of your mercy. I am a product of your mercy over and over again. And Lord, I thank you for your mercies that are new every single day. Because you know we need them. We need your mercy. And I pray that God, for each and every person that has watched this, that God, they would have a deep revelation of your mercy in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Yeah.